Do you really want even further global instability costing precious life? United Nations Climate Chief Simon Steele asked delegates in a passionate speech on Monday in Baku, delivering opening remarks at the COP29 summit. Soaring rhetoric, urgent pleas and pledges of cooperation contrasted with a backdrop of seismic political changes, global wars and economic hardships as United Nations annual climate talks began Monday and got right to the hard part, money. We must agree a new global climate finance goal, Steele said in his opening statement. He said failure to reach climate goals would result in higher energy and grocery bills, weakened economies and global instability, for everyone. If at least two-thirds of the world's nations cannot afford to cut emissions quickly then every nation pays a brutal price. If nations can't build resilience into supply chains, the entire global economy will be brought to its knees. No country is immune, he said. The financial package being hashed out at this year's talks is important because every nation has until early next year to submit new, and presumably stronger, targets for curbing emissions of heat-trapping gases from the burning of coal, oil and natural gas. That's part of the 2015 Paris Agreement for nations to ratchet up efforts every five years. The long-term global average temperature is now 1.3 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial times, only two-tenths of a degree from the agreed-upon threshold. For the world to prevent more than 1.5 degrees of warming, global carbon emissions must be slashed by 42% by 2030, a new United Nations report said. We cannot leave Baku without a substantial outcome, Steele said. Now is the time to show that global cooperation is not down for the count. It is rising to the moment. Excellencies, delegates, colleagues, friends, it is an honor to welcome you to COP29. I thank Dr. Sultan Al Jaber and the Emirati Presidency for their tireless work as they pass the baton to President Babiev and Azerbaijan. This UNFCCC process is the only place we have to address the rampant climate crisis and to credibly hold each other to account to act on it. And we know this process is working because without it, humanity would be headed towards five degrees of global warming. We cannot afford to continue upending lives and livelihoods in every nation. So let's make this real. Do you want your grocery and energy bills to go up even more? Do you want your country to become economically uncompetitive? Do you really want even further global instability costing precious life. This crisis is affecting every single individual in the world one way or another. We must agree a new global climate finance goal. If at least two-thirds of the world's nations cannot afford to cut emissions quickly, then every nation pays a brutal price. If nations can't build resilience into supply chains, the entire global economy will be brought to its knees. No country is immune. And even as temperatures rise, the implementation of our agreements must claw them back. Clean energy, and infrastructure investment will reach $2 trillion in 2024, almost twice that of fossil fuels. The shift to clean energy and climate resilience will not be stopped. Our job is to accelerate this and make sure its huge benefits are shared by all countries, 
and all people. In the past few years, we've taken some historic steps forward. We cannot leave Baku without a substantial outcome. Appreciating the importance of this moment, parties must act accordingly. Now is the time to show that global cooperation is not down for the count. It is rising to the moment. So I urge you all, let us rise together. I thank you. The newly elected U.S. President Donald Trump is already shaping the country's policy on the main directions, Ukraine and Israel. This was reported by Bloomberg. With phone calls to the leaders of both nations, and another expected with Russian President Vladimir Putin, Trump's victory, and the possibility he will seek major policy changes, is reverberating in both countries and well beyond. One former Trump administration official, who asked not to be identified discussing private assessments, said the president-elect will have an immediate head start thanks to the perception that he will be tougher than his predecessor. U.S. adversaries may change their behavior in advance, the person said, some deterred by the threat of U.S. retaliation, and others seeking to exploit their remaining leverage before President Joe Biden leaves office. That's being felt most acutely in Ukraine. Trump promised during the campaign to solve the Ukraine crisis before Inauguration Day, and President Volodymyr Zelensky is already scrambling to catch up. Tesla CEO and Trump supporter Elon Musk was in the room for Zelensky's call with Trump this week, according to a person familiar with the matter. Musk has previously advocated for a negotiated solution in which Ukraine gives up some of its territory. Trump's election has changed the Ukrainian rhetoric and planning in their views about negotiations, said Shelby Majid, deputy director of the Atlantic Council's Eurasia Center. Majid said Ukraine is moving in the direction, knowing that Trump has won, of accepting that negotiations are a reality. A former Trump administration official told the publication that the elected president will benefit from the perception that he will be tougher than his predecessor. According to the publication, the authorities of this country are beginning to realize the inevitability of negotiations. Trump is expected to pursue a policy of reluctance in the fight for territories occupied by Russia. Israel, however, will benefit the most from Trump's presidency. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is a longtime ally of Trump. Trump has already publicly stated that he will give Israel more freedom to prepare possible strikes on Iran, especially if Tehran decides to change its nuclear concept, the publication noted. The fact of an electoral result is itself reassuring for some countries, which were preparing for either outcome but unable or unwilling to move forward without knowing who would lead the US and in what direction.